Hi, I'm Lois Price and I'm on the road tracking down some of Britain's most interesting and creative people. Now I've always wanted to play an instrument made by master luthier Phil Davidson. So I'm on my way to meet him at his workshop in Forest of Deep. Hi, Lois. Nice to see you. Uh, forgive me if I don't get up, but I'm right in the middle of carving this beautiful piece of Slovenian maple. This is going to be a copy of a Gibson F5 mandolin of 1932, which is the absolute superior mandolin of any time ever. So, Phil, you're not just making a knockoff Gibson, are you? Lois. It's in no way a knockoff. I'm trying to make an improvement of the Gibson. I'm emulating those guys who made the originals, who were German luthiers, very, very highly skilled individuals. I'm trying to make something that is very, very special. So, Phil, how long will it take to make a mandolin? Probably six months to do the back. Although I'll be working on various other instruments at the same time and if I really thought about how long it's taking me I would probably retire. So what's the process to make the back of a mandolin like this? Well Lewis we'd start with a violin back blank in this is very very high quality Slovenian maple and that is going to be divided down the middle and then jointed edge to edge so that we have this you can see the thickness that I'm starting with. That is going to be carved down until it's a perfectly graduated arch and we're giving the wood a voice. This is going to sing. I've always wondered how luthiers curve the sides. Well, I can show you exactly how that's done right now. <laughs> This is a violin maker's bending iron that I've adapted by welding up a bracket for it and linking in a room lamp dimmer switch. I can control the voltage and therefore set it to exactly the temperature I want to make that water sizzle and drive the steam into the wood, which makes it much easier to follow the contour that I want. Listen, can you hear that? To the shape of a soprano ukulele which is what in this instance we're building so we bend in one direction until we're happy with that curve and then we try it in the mold and that is just slightly more than we want that will relax down into shape when we're ready i'm now going to bend the curve at the waist And then we apply it back to the iron and bend it in the reverse direction, applying pressure, but very, very gently because this maple is very, very thin and could easily, easily break. But there it goes, bent in the other direction. But the steam is being forced into the wood by the pressure. And then I'm going to turn it over again and go the other way. That's taking shape very, very nicely now. One thing I've always wanted to know is what wood do you use to build an acoustic guitar? Okay, Lois, that's a big question. But basically, for a nice archtop guitar, I would use Carpathian maple for the back because it balances particularly well with Swiss pine, which I would use for the front because the resonance you will get from the combination of those two woods is spectacular. Listen. 
listen to that ring. When you combine the spruce and the maple, you will get a particularly beautiful tone. So how do your customers decide what wood they want to use for their instruments? Well, Lois, I can show you that very easily. Just here, I have my sampler, soprano ukulele, which is made entirely of leftovers, and it is mahogany, spruce, koa, box, maple, walnut, sycamore, cherry, maple, lacewood, rosewood, yew, and the binding is ebony. Lewis, this is an interesting detail that you might like. This instrument was sent to me for repair by an author who lives in the south of England called Louis de Bernier, and this instrument was the inspiration for Captain Corelli's mandolin. to have a pick together playing Davidson instruments. Man, what did you want to do? 